Hi folks and thanks for joining me. We're back on the uh, little Zenith here. Let's pick up and uh, recap where we're at here with the uh, power supply site. R11 here you can see I've got highlighted in uh, pink it was an exception. It's uh, missing. I'll probably just go back with a 6 volt lamp in that area. Unless I find out um, you know it compromises the uh, performance of the uh, circuit itself. We'll move over here to number 9. That's an RF choke. We'll check it. DC resistance first. Note that. And then check inductance for reference. We need to check the uh, transformer itself here that's used in the uh, vibrator power supply. We'll give it a good uh, DC check and uh, make sure that uh, we don't have anything open there. And then uh, moving over here to another RF choke, number 8. We'll check it as well, DC resistance and inductance. And then lastly, we'll repeat the same here for number six. It's a, a power choke here, resides between the two capacitors. These uh, two capacitors and the choke, again, used to take the uh, pulsating uh, DC and uh, just clean that up here for the uh, B plus side of the uh, radio. We'll start here with part number nine. And you'll see it does have a, a part number assigned to it. Uh, a little hard to read there, but uh, indicator is an RF choke. We'll spend more time on the purpose of the choke based on my uh, limited knowledge here on this type of uh, receiver. But uh, number nine, let's check the uh, DC resistance here, see what we have. And you can see I've got a uh, clip on here, and I'm reading about 1.5 ohms. Now, one thing I did notice. If I move this thing around, it's uh, very intermittent. And my DC resistance is all over the place. I think what I'm going to uh, do is uh, I want to better understand the uh, choke anyway. Actually, what's inside this uh, paper. As I mentioned, it appears to be like a uh, handmade choke with just some uh, coils of wire possibly around a uh, capacitor or something. I'm just speculating, but uh, I want to open this up. And uh, let's take a closer look at it. And there we have it. Again, I'm kind of eager here to get this thing apart so we can take a closer uh, look at it here internally see how this thing is made kind of strange you can see I've got it hooked up here now and I can move this lead around and I'm not seeing much fluctuation at all let's uh, cut this thing open here and uh, see what's going on with it we'll document the uh, number of turns as well as the uh, gauge wire and the uh, diameter itself. You can see here that's uh, showing up the diameter itself of the uh, coil and the actual length of the coil. Probably close enough there to uh, 40 millimeters long. I'll just see if I can take my uh, razor here and uh, just slip it up underneath the paper. Here's a uh, good look at what we've got. Let me uh, count the uh, number of windings here. Okay guys, you can see I'm about uh, 4.8 microhenries here on the coil and uh, 0 0.05 ohms. So I'm more interested in this number right here. So 4.8 if I end up having to reproduce this for some reason. Uh, the coil itself is uh, it's like a coil on top of a coil. So there's no former other than the wire itself. And about 31 to uh, 31 and a half windings on the outside coil. And I would assume the inside coil to be about the same. Anyway, 
uh, you can see here I'm getting some intermittent uh, readings here on the inductance. I'm not sure if that's because I've still got a uh, dirty connection point here. Uh, let me clean this up here. I don't want to open this thing up or take it apart unless I have to. Problem solved. You can see the uh, issue was really just more corrosion around the uh, wire itself. Just took some time to clean some uh, insulation off. Do a little scraping there with the razor. Some cleanup here with some alcohol. And uh, I cannot reproduce the issue. So the wire itself, can, I think, is just a continuous piece of uh, conductor. And uh, I'll take my mic here and uh, put it on it to uh, gauge the diameter for others out there that may have to uh, reproduce this piece. And then I'll recall out the uh, dimensions here that I have. But you can see this is the important number here, uh, about four, right at 4.8 microhenries. Let me get some uh, super glue out. I think I've got some gel super glue and uh, just get this back together here, make it nice and tight. Looking back at that RF choke that attaches here on the synchronous vibrator pin 3 on this tube socket and this jumper that came across on the 6 volt side to the terminal strip to where that resides uh, for those that may need to reproduce it. The uh, dimensions themselves about 41 millimeters in length and the outside most diameter is about uh, 11 millimeters and the wire diameter itself uh, looks like it's uh, somewhere around 0 0.045 inches. Uh, I think the closest AWG is about a number 17 gauge. So I would guess uh, just my measurement somewhere between a 17 and 18 AWG solid copper wire uh, could be reused to uh, reproduce the uh, RF choke. 4.77 microhenries and 0 0.05 to 0 0.06 uh, ohms DC resistance. We'll look at the primary side of the transformer first. We'll look at this upper winding and you'll see it attaches here to uh, pin number one. These are still soldered in. So we'll go from uh, pin 1, we'll go all the way down and check the uh, opposite end of the uh, primary back to pin number 5. So uh, 1 to 5. Let's check the uh, DC resistance there and see what we have. I've got the meter hooked up now um, so we can look at this center tap position here. And I'm just attaching back over here to uh, pin number three, which will be the uh, center tap location of the transformer as called out here on the schematic. And you can see I'm reading about uh, 0.8 ohms of uh, DC resistance. We'll leave the uh, white lead where it's at, going back to the center tap location. And let me now check uh, DC resistance. Uh, this is the primary um, side that we're on right now. Let me move over to this black lead here and repeat the test here. Okay, well, you can see it bouncing back and forth here, 0 0.8, 0 0.9 ohms. Let me uh, document that as well. I'm going to go back here to the other side just for a moment. And this one's kind of bouncing back and forth as well. I think what I'm going to do is just show it at 0.85 ohms. I now have the meter placed here looking at the uh, top and bottom side of the transformer. Then we'll do the same exercise, split things up, look at that center tap. Uh, but you can see the uh, center connection point goes back to uh, pin number four. And the uh, bottom side here goes back to uh, pin number two. So two to four, you can glance here at the meter and you can see we're reading uh, what 440 ohms or 0.44K. Let me document that. You can follow along here, you'll see that center tap location on the transformer secondary side comes across, goes back to the uh, plus side of C15, which also attaches to the other RF 
uh, choke number eight, which we said was up here. So um, I should be able to go from, you can see this uh, connection or this wire that I've cut loose that went to that dual section uh, capacitor here. I should be able to uh, connect uh, right here. This should be my uh, center tap location coming out from the uh, transformer itself. Doesn't matter which lead I move here. Let that settle down and you can see uh, right at 207 ohms. So uh, roughly half of what we were seeing on the uh, secondary uh, total winding side, which you would expect to see. Uh, they'll never be exact. Uh, one always has more winding or more wire length than the other side. So let me move this jumper here. And let's see what we got here on the other side. And just as I explained, they are, are never equal. More wire length on this particular one and uh, right at 235 ohms of DC resistance. So uh, just DC resistance checks only on the transformer at this time. That doesn't signify there's not a problem. Um, I'll take some time when I clean up the uh, solder joints as well uh, just to check and make sure that I don't have any leakage between the uh, ground or side of the uh, transformer back to either one of the windings and uh, make sure we've got an open loop there as well and the transformer is not shorted against the uh, housing or back to ground but um, I'll do that a little later just some preliminary checks here to make sure that I want to go forward with rebuilding this uh, power supply section so uh, we've got this uh, RF choke here that I mentioned uh, let's just go ahead and look at it next and then we'll come back to the power choke here and check it. Part number eight, the other uh, RF choke here. And I had already attached uh, one lead here to the connection point where uh, Charlie 15, the positive side of the electrolytic, used to attach to the choke. And uh, now what I need to do is just attach where the other lead for C11 actually attached at one time. I think that's my uh, connection point that I need right at uh, 17 ohms. I need to uh, make certain that we're not being influenced by the uh, power choke itself here, number six. Let me uh, look at that just a little closer and just make sure the DC resistance that we're seeing there around 17 ohms is uh, an accurate representation that the uh, RF choke here, number 8, is actually good. Based on what I can see uh, without uh, doing some desoldering on this choke, um, I'm going to go with this, the uh, 17 ohms. Let's uh, try to check inductance here. That may be an indicator if we're actually reading things correctly and see if we can actually pick up the inductance of this uh, particular RF choke as well. Okay, let's flip this on and see what we've got here. Well, that kind of makes sense to me. Hopefully that uh, glare there's not too much from the uh, lighting and you guys can see that. So I'm showing uh, what around uh, one point. 027 millihenries and you can still see the DC resistance there around 17.1. So I'm going to go with that for now. As I clean up those uh, connection points, I may take that coil completely out. I'll recheck it. If there's anything different, I'll uh, share that with you guys. Uh, it may indeed be doing another restoration on this model that uses that same RF choke. Okay, moving along here, number six, that's what we've got left. As I mentioned, that power choke there that had all the tar on it. That'd be interesting to see if uh, that thing is any good. May just be a, a coating of a rubberized uh, material they uh, put on it for um, who knows what, heat insulation or just uh, noise vibration. Somebody chime in if you know. Uh, it'd be great uh, edification for me. Let's uh, get part number uh, six here checked. I'm going to just use the LCR meter on it. I would guess it would be somewhere between maybe 10 and 20. 
Henry's, uh, the choke itself, but um, who knows for sure. Okay, I believe I can leave my white lead attached here because that goes down to one side of the choke and I think I can go back over here where I cut this capacitor off and actually connect here and read through the uh, choke itself. I may be incorrect, so we'll see what we get here. Bring the uh, little LCR meter up here. And you can see I do have like a little question mark that popped up. So it may be because I've got some other stuff soldered to this, or maybe I'm not on the exact location, but uh, it's showing uh, what just south of 13 Henry. So that's kind of in the middle of where I thought the choke may reside. And you can see the DC resistance around 611 ohms. So I'm not surprised by that. Um, impedance or DC resistance along with the inductance here that we're reading. I'll go with these numbers for now and if I find something uh, different I'll let you guys know. Appreciate you watching here as we uh, just checked out a few of the other uh, components here that were remaining to be checked. The uh, RF choke number nine, the uh, power transformer which is really the heart of the circuit um, the other RF choke, and I don't have it highlighted here, but uh, most last, lastly, the um, power choke here, number six, to help uh, clean up some of the uh, DC here and make it as pure as possible here, going back to the uh, plates and screens of the uh, tubes themselves. And you can see the uh, B plus voltage that we'll end up looking for somewhere you know, plus or minus 10% or so, 20% of the 143 volts is called out here, 148 here. So we'll get started next, rebuilding the uh, power supply. So we can uh, plug in the uh, vibrator, synchronous vibrator, and make sure that it actually uh, functions. So that's where we'll uh, follow up, folks, in the next video. Thanks again for watching this uh, brief video on testing these few uh, critical components. It's appreciated. Take care.